As somebody who works in tourism on the Great Barrier Reef, the most common question I get asked is, is the Great Barrier Reef dead? And the answer to that is... No, it is not. So, to give you context, the Great Barrier Reef is made up of 3,000 individual reefs. And I have personally been to around 30 of those, which is a drop in the water compared to all the reefs on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, I've seen some really good reefs and I've seen some really bad reefs. Some reefs, uh, you'll have dive sites on the reef, so parts of the reef that are really dead and parts of the reef that are absolutely flourishing with life. So it's really hard to tell without extensive scientific research whether or not the reef is dying. That is a better question to ask, is, is the Great Barrier Reef dying? Uh, there are quite a number of threats that threaten the reef. You've got uh, cyclone damage, you've got bleaching, which are both caused by climate change, you've got uh, plastic pollution, agricultural runoff, you've got um, the excessive killing of sharks. So there are quite a number of threats that face the reef and we're going to do a series going over each one of these threats in detail, talking about what we can do about th these things as individuals, what people are already doing about it and what research is being done to ensure that our reef does not die. So the Great Barrier Reef is made up of 3,000 individual reefs and in those reefs you have different reef structures. So you have things called coral gardens which are bits of corals planted in shallow sands. So they dot themselves around, they're not necessarily part of a larger structure but they sort of grow out in sandy patches. You also have coral bommies which I think of like little plateaus so they have a flat top and they sort of slowly go down um, and they're like little pinnacles. You might have a bommy here and a bommy here and a bommy here and you might have swim throughs through the bommies. Um, and then you've also got reef walls. So reef walls are essentially the wall that goes down the edge side of the reef. So it's part of the greater reef structure and it just goes down. Each one of these structures face different threats. So for example, Coral gardens are often in the lagoon side of a, coral, of a reef. So on the lagoon side, depending on how the overall reef structure is shaped, if it gets too hot, uh, that internal lagoon can really cook. And then that can cause a lot of coral bleaching inside the lagoons. Whilst the wild side of the reef, which is the reef that is exposed to the ocean, often gets a lot more cooler water brush over it, but if cyclones go over those reefs, it's the walls that are more at risk. So essentially, what we need to ensure as a people, and in Australia especially, is to ensure that we reduce our impact of climate change so we don't have a coral bleaching event and too many cyclones hitting the reef because that really makes it struggle to recover. Uh, the reef itself, as well, is a growing system. So it, think of it like a forest. You have in a rainforest or in a forest you might have a bushfire and that's devastating. Think of a bushfire like a coral bleaching event. So everything's died and you see the poor animals burnt up and it's a really heartbreaking thing to see. And you see coral bleaching as well and everything's white and everything's crumbling apart. But then in a forest you'll see little bits of leaves growing up from the ashes and with the coral reef you'll see little baby corals starting to grow on the dead corals so in order for a coral to grow it can't just grow in sand it needs to grow on a substrate whether it's a rock or a previously dead coral the great barrier reef is in a state of death and rebirth 
lives. When you have a mass death event, whether by a cyclone or coral bleaching, you'll have a lot of regrowth. So if you ever do go to a coral reef or the Great Barrier Reef and you see a lot of it's dead, have a look for the little baby corals growing in amongst all the dead bits. And that allows for the reef to recover, just like a forest would recover from a bushfire. So the Great Barrier Reef isn't doomed. It's not going to die tomorrow. It's definitely not dead. But we need to make sure that we do all that we can to research, monitor, and do what we can as individuals to ensure that the Great Barrier Reef stays this beautiful and amazing superstructure of the natural world. Why should we care about saving the Great Barrier Reef? You know, for me, I love it. I love nature and I feel like nature should be preserved. But there are a lot of really good reasons um, to save the Great Barrier Reef. And one of them is because the Great Barrier Reef is like a second set of lungs for the Earth. I often hear the Amazon rainforest being called the lungs of the planet because it takes away carbon dioxide and produces oxygen. Well, the Great Barrier Reef supports a lot of photosynthesis through the algae and corals. Uh, so it's a big carbon sink and it reduces our carbon levels. Without the Great Barrier Reef, there'll be significantly larger um, amounts of carbon in the atmosphere. And as well as that, it supports um, our fishing industry. So uh, there's lots of breeding grounds in within the Great Barrier Reef of different kinds of fish. So you like your Spanish mackerel? Well, they need to breed on the Great Barrier Reef. You like your barramundi cod? They grow on the Great Barrier Reef. So the Great Barrier Reef significantly supports the fishing industry in Australia. Um, and it is a living, breathing system. And it's huge. The Great Barrier Reef is absolutely huge. It's the size of Italy. So you think about that, the size of Italy in our oceans. If that's no longer there, there's going to be severe impacts to us. That's some of which we know and some of which I don't want to know. We don't know. Uh, so it's all part of a bigger system. If something happens to the entire reef, then it's going to have an impact across the globe. So as an individual, you might ask yourself, well, what can I do about this? What can I do to help save the Great Barrier Reef? Uh, you might be all the way in New Mexico, or you might be all the way just relaxing in Bristol. Well, there's things that we can do as individuals. So we can look at our carbon output. Is there anything that we can do to um, conserve our energy, uh, use less energy? What about thinking about sustainable plastics, not using um, disposable plastics, think about that. And then there's also several organizations that really do a lot on the Great Barrier Reef. So there's um, an organization called Citizens of the Great Barrier Reef, where if you ever come to anywhere along the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland, uh, you can take photos and submit them to their website and you can really contribute to helping us understand the reef across the whole of Queensland because again there are 3,000 reefs and the scientists can't look at them all so if you go with um, a tourism operator you can absolutely take some photos for them and put them on their website the link will be in the description below alternatively they also have a thing where you can have a look at corals and determine uh, how good the coral health is are they alive are they dead are they lively because there are hundreds and thousands of photos put on there and it really helps people analyze them properly if they're sorted by tourists or citizens. That's why it's called the Citizens of the Great Barrier Reef. It's a big community project that anyone can be a part of and that way we can really make a difference together.